What has stood out most to you from yesterday? Well, not just from yesterday. I've been in contact with the uh, with players in the NBA, also with a number of coaches and um, even uh, owners. And um, uh, you could, I could see this one coming um, some time ago. Uh, these players are not uh, just basketball players. They live in this society, uh, and they go and play games. Uh, uh, many of them, the majority of them, uh, fearing uh, that they'll be shot on the way to or from the game. Uh, they uh, share. Uh, that uh, reality, those circumstances with the broader community. This is something that has come through turnstiles and over the stadium wall, but it is not something that is escapable uh, by the sports leagues in this country. Dr. Edwards, obviously, it's always an honor and a privilege to have you on the show, sir. Thank you for being on the show right now. Um, Thank you. Where do you, think the, where do you think the players should go from here? Uh, assuming you would give them advice, what, what advice would you give to them about where they should go from here if indeed they want to have the kind of impact that they clearly and we all clearly desire <laughs> for them to have? That was a conversation that I had with uh, some players before they had their meeting last night. They're having another meeting this morning. Uh, it's essentially the same conversation uh, that I've been having with the commissioner's office in the NFL. Uh, they must begin to uh, come together and understand uh, the urgency of this of, of this moment. Uh, they move beyond protest, uh, uh, where a statement is made to um, uh, boycott, where you're sending a message. Now that message has to be uh, meaningful, and that means getting everybody on the same page and beginning to approach those people uh, who have the power. Uh, to make changes. If an NFL owner calls the governor of a state, the governor's going to pick up the phone. Uh, if you have Steph Curry and Draymond Green walk into the mayor's office about the circumstances uh, involving the police in Oakland, California, the mayor's going to be there and available. Uh, so they have to begin to strategize about how they bring all of their resources to bear uh, ownership, the money, uh, the political contacts, the sponsorship, uh, the people who run the hotels and so forth and the restaurants who benefit uh, from the games and, and, and the leagues uh, well, when they host those games. Uh, all of that has to be brought uh, to the table. And I think that you'll begin to see some changes. Dr. Edwards, a couple months ago, uh, Sean Doolittle, a pitcher, relief pitcher for the Washington Nationals, made a comment I like that, that sports is really like a reward for a functioning society, for a healthy society. And he was referring mostly to COVID at the time, so we're literally not healthy. But also in this way, obviously, we're not functioning in a healthy way. Um, in terms of the way things go viral and movements go viral, if there's a contagion here to the NFL, in my view, in other words, if NFL players did the same thing, in my view, that would e have an even bigger impact because it probably cuts across, or certainly does by the numbers, demographic lines and, and in greater numbers. Um, in your view, is it a better strategy to continue playing, to have the microphones and cameras in front of their faces and to stay relevant that mm -hmm. way, or to for this to act virally and spread to other leagues and have those shut down as well? I think it comes down to what the strategy is going forward. Uh, America has never been a healthy society in terms of race, uh, going all the way back to uh, the enslavement of black people. And on top of it, uh, part of the problem that we have here and what has pushed things to this level is that uh, black people have never been seen as creditable witnesses and arbiters of their own circumstances and outcomes. Uh, this goes back to the time that slaves said, uh, we want to be free, and the slave master said, my slaves are happy. So at the end of the day, uh, they're sending a message. And what happens now going forward would depend upon what that strategy uh, is uh, and how uh, playing games or not playing games uh, plays into it. In 1961, Bill Russell organized a boycott of a basketball game in Kentucky because the restaurant and the hotel where they were staying uh, would serve the white players on the team, but not the black players. So he said, OK, we're not going to play. But he didn't continue to boycott for the rest of the season over that issue, even though it, segregation was a still ongoing uh, challenge uh, in American society. So it depends upon what the strategy is going forward. I think that the NFL uh, most certainly has a role to play. I'm impressed by the fact that so many teams have canceled practice for the day to discuss these issues, the fact that many of their players uh, have to worry about being shot on the way home from practice or on the way to practice. Uh, I'm glad to see that. But the issue now is how do we move from protest 
and and uh, this uh, strategy of sending a message to actually bringing about change, to leveraging the power that we have to bring about change. And that's something that has to be worked out across mm -hmm. the league. Dr. Edwards, um, NBA players decided to go on and play and go to the bubble and play basketball. They put Black Lives Matter on the court. They put messaging, powerful messaging, equality, things like that on the back of their jerseys. And guess what? Police brutality is still happening. Jacob Blake still got shot in the back seven times. And now players are clearly fed up. So in your opinion, do you think it was the right decision to go play in the bubble? Yes. I mean, I think it was the right decision to go and play in the bubble. I think that Kyrie Irving and those players who did not go and play also made the right decision in the same sense that in 1968, when I was advocating a boycott of the Olympic Games for the same reason, we, we needed to send a message after the assassination of Dr. King and not just make a statement, but making a statement was fine. I think Carlos and Smith did an admirable thing. I think that what they did is memorable for that reason. But at the same time, uh, we're talking about a tremendously complex situation, and there are multiple paths to addressing it. So, yes, I support those athletes uh, who decided to go and play. Uh, I think that it put them in a position to make the statement that they have made. I also support Kyrie Irving and those players who did not go and play uh, because they felt that it was more important that they be in the streets with the uh, uh, people who are trying to resolve these situations uh, in their communities. So I don't see any contradiction there at all.